this foot is around the corner. I'm not just facing him, but I'm also not in a full T position. I'm certainly not here where I'll get put in that headlock. I am just next to one of his feet and my head is on the other pec. My temple's against him here. I'm gonna have the lead hand, the one that's already more behind him, uh, wrap flush to his back. So I don't want it sticking out at an angle. I want it actually flush with both sides of his back. And the other hand, so this is the turn style and this is the latch. So I'm gonna get that latch going. Put my head against the pec here. And if, my, if I get a little pull here and I'm tight to him and, and in fact, walking him backwards if you're in a dynamic situation, that's sort of your good front clinch. Okay, so the takedowns, two takedowns are from this front clinch position, the leg hook takedown and the um, body fold takedown. So we're gonna do the leg, leg hook takedown first. So no clinch, just setting up a good clinch, no uh, shot, just setting up a good clinch. I have my foot next to his foot, a flush um, turnstile here with one, a lash, the other hand is the lash. If you do it the other way, the problem is that if he backs up, this will slide off of here, so yeah, so we do latch it this way. Put my head here, okay, and then what I want is to trip this foot. I'm gonna reach behind it and pick it up and trip him. But the problem is um, I have to time it just like you guys were just timing foot sweeps. So if I try to do it here and his weight's on it, like, you know, it's hard. It's hard for me, it's a waste of my energy. And it's pretty easy for him with me standing on one foot to then probably turn the table. So that's not good. So what I do want instead is I want him on most of his weight on the other leg, the one that I'm not sweeping. So. I'm gonna just step in like this. I'm just invading his space. I don't put my foot forward with no weight behind it. I invade his space so that most of the weight's on that foot. And now this one can come behind, I pick it up, and we turn. Take him down here, and what you don't need to do is step around his leg. This knee is already on a trajectory to cut through, so you can just cut through right to mouth. One more time, and we're gonna spin on the way down. So I've stepped around the corner, and this is here. But I, don't, I want my head on the other side than my foot. And here's my latch. And I'm here. And I'm going to invade his space. So most of the weight comes with this leg. And I'm going to pick this leg. I pick it up with this leg. And I'm actually going to spin that way. So I pick this up. And I'm going to spin us this way. And this knee just cuts right across there. Don't feel the need to step over. It's just extra movement. And then I'm going to get a low wide base. So I want my arms wide like this. <coughs> In class, we're doing it starting from like a static place, uh, which is why I have to invade his space and then pick it up. When you clinch on somebody and you're moving, it's just you're just gonna time it like you were timing the foot sweep. You're gonna wait till his foot is light and then do it. But we're creating that lightness <clears throat> with that first step that we take. So we're here, we'll step in, spin us. This knee goes right through there to a little wide mouth. Let's do it with your partners. Three, two, one. We are gonna do it statically, but I want you to know, mostly this is like great for dynamic situations. From here, one thing that I find helps me is the arm that's behind his back, I turn it thumbs down because I'm trying to rotate him backwards over something. And if, my, if he goes over my turning arm, I find that it's more effective. I wanna put this like on his sacrum and I'm gonna put my shoulder a little lower than when I was here when it's time to go and I'm going to roll him up and over and lean him back. I step over him while still standing, and then we're gonna go down to the ground. Uh, so you're not turning at all, you know? Nope, on this one, it is straight back. Okay. This one, he, it looks like this. He goes like this to here. And it do, again, it doesn't have to be a big thud if as the, take, the person taking him down, I do the right footwork. And the correct footwork is, as he goes, as he gets leaned back, that I step over him while standing, and now I can put him down. If he's not way, way heavier than me, I should be able to just you know, place him on the ground if he holds me. So when we're here and I do the stake down, lean him back and step over. You know, he's got me, I've got him. I should be able to like ease him down right to mouth. So it shouldn't be a major thug. <clears throat> Again, my arm rotating is the kind of thing that helps because I'm feeding his sacrum over my arm as I lean him back. And one thing I want to say about this is it's not just a shearing which is what it kind of looks like. It kind of looks like I'm pulling his hips and pushing his shoulders. That would be shearing, but I don't get as much force that way as if I, as I do if I do like a, a circle, right? So I'm trying to think in a circle, so that's why I drop my shoulder 
So now they're on opposite sides of a sphere that I want to roll him over like that. And you can see me rolling my fist over. So when I get to here, especially when moving, I'm going to drop for just a second and then roll him, roll him back, step over while, while, mat, while standing. So it's mount while standing. And then put him down and you're already there. Let's give it a try. Oh, and to trigger, for a trigger, you can have the guy uh, rear back on the face side to punch you. So when he rears back, yes, it really is the perfect time to put a guy down, go down to your nice low wide. Nice. Let's do it. Three, two, one.